I've always wondered if it's just coincidence that the word sibilance has so much sibilance in it. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. My name's Tony. About a week ago, I had a friend reach out to me. He was having some problems with his mix because he couldn't quite tame the sibilance in the singer's voice. So I told him just to reach for a de-esser plugin, and he told me he had never really used one before. So I figured this week I'd take the time to show you guys how to use a de-esser plugin and to introduce you Reaper users out there to the stock de-esser within Reaper. So let's start with the absolute basics. What is a de-esser? A de-esser is a form of compressor designed to be triggered only by the high frequencies where sibilance is known to happen. The purpose of a de-esser is to get rid of the sibilance sounds in a voice. So the S sounds, the C sounds, you know, the SH sound, all of those tend to get picked up in a fairly harsh way by your microphones. And you could go through with a narrow band EQ, find your sibilant frequencies, and just pull them down and out of the mix. But then unless you automate that frequency band to let up whenever that harsh frequency isn't happening, then it's gonna pull a very crucial part of your frequency range out of that vocal track for the entire mix. So a de-esser is made to recognize those harsh frequencies and attenuate them only when they're actually being perceived as harsh. So de-essers come in all shapes and sizes, but we're gonna go over two of them today. We're gonna to start with Reaper's stock de-esser, the JS de-esser. And then I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the one I use most in my production, the Waves Renaissance de-esser. I should mention before we go on any further, Waves is not paying me to push their de-esser product. They're not endorsing me or this video in any way. I bought Waves Renaissance de-esser a lot of years ago and I use it a lot just because I like it. Now, before we jump right into this, please be sure to hit that like button, that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can be notified anytime I release new content. It helps support the channel, it helps support me and it helps me to be able to make a lot of great new content for you guys. All right, so here we have the stock de-esser for Reaper. Now, Reaper stock plugins have gained kind of a reputation for being not all that pretty. And as you can clearly see, it ain't winning any beauty pageants. But the great thing about these JS plugins is that they work and they work well. So here's a quick rundown of the functions of this de-esser plugin. The top drop-down menu here, processing, you can choose between a mono or a stereo source. In my case, we've got a mono source happening here, so we're going to stick with that. Your target type toggles between a high pass mode and a band pass mode. So the high pass mode is going to attenuate all the frequencies above the frequency that you set the plugin to be triggered by. Whereas the bandpass mode is gonna attenuate frequencies centered on the frequency that you set and a certain amount of the surrounding frequencies depending on how wide or narrow you set your bandwidth. But we'll get to that in a second. The next drop down menu is a super handy option that I wish all DSers had. It's titled monitor. When the monitor is off, your audio file plays just as it normally should. I'm not your superhero. Yes, I am that bad. But with the monitor on, you're going to hear just the frequencies that are being attenuated by your de -esser. I'm not your superhero. Yes, I am that bad. That's really handy for dialing in your de -esser. You can set the monitor on, set it to bandpass mode, and kind of sweep the frequency around until you hear those S's getting really aggressive. And that'll be the frequency you set your de -esser to be triggered by. So the next slider down is your frequency slider. That ranges from 1.5K or 1500 Hertz up to 12K or 12,000 Hertz. That's the main range where you're gonna have troubles with sibilance. I find more specifically that it happens between the 5K and about 8K mode, but it all depends on the voice you've recorded. Next down, we have our bandwidth slider. That works just like the Q on your EQ setting. A narrow bandwidth will give you a very narrow range of frequencies, whereas a wide bandwidth will give you a very wide range of frequencies. So with this bandwidth slider, all the way to the left is a narrow bandwidth, all the way to the right is a wide bandwidth. Below that, we've got what are essentially compressor settings. You've got your threshold, your ratio, and time constraints. The time constraints drop-down menu gives you three different attack and release settings. I've always found that keeping it on the absolute quickest attack and release settings helps you to grab that S and let go of it without affecting the rest of the line that the singer is singing. So the threshold, if you're not familiar with compressor settings, sets a level that your audio signal will have to pass before getting attenuated. So if you set it at negative 25, which it is by default, the frequency that you selected in the slider above would have to exceed negative 25 decibels before the de would kick in and attenuate it down. And the amount that it gets attenuated by is controlled by the ratio below there. 
By default, it's set at four to one, meaning that the signal would have to pass your threshold by four decibels before it would audibly raise by one decibel. So here's how I would go about setting this DS. You'd start by finding a line that has a lot of sibilance in it, and I'm gonna narrow this down just to some of the worst offending lines, and set up a loop. Then I'm going to set my de-esser to bandpass, put the monitor on, and go for a fairly narrow bandwidth. And we're gonna sweep the frequency around until you find that those S sounds are especially aggressive, which on this singer's voice is at 7.5K or 7,589 Hertz. Now at this point, we can turn the monitor off and decide whether we want to keep this in band pass mode or high pass mode just by toggling back and forth between them. Actually, I skipped a step. First, we're going to bring the threshold down quite a bit and the ratio up quite a bit. We're going to set this to be a little over aggressive just so we can hear what's going on. I'm not your superhero. I'm not your superhero. I'm not your superhero. I'm not your superhero. So I think for this example, I'm gonna keep it in bandpass mode and I've widened up the bandwidth a little bit. So what that'll do is around the frequency that we set this at, 7.5K, when that frequency gets built up and a little bit aggressive, the de is gonna kick in and duck down that frequency range. It'll show us how much at this meter down at the bottom here. Whereas if we had it in high pass mode, then it would be triggered by that frequency that we've set, but everything above that would be lowered down as well. So now that we've got that sorted out, we're gonna raise this threshold a little bit. The idea is to only have this meter showing gain reduction when the S is hit. I'm now Joe Superhero. 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 Something like that. So here's how this line sounds without the DSer on it. I'm now Joe Superhero. And with the DSer on it. I'm now Joe Superhero. So you can hear it tames that sibilance down a little bit without affecting the brightness of the vocal track too much. Now that JS DSer is a very capable DSing plugin. But if you find that to be a little bit too complicated, the Waze Renaissance DSer looks like this. This is one that I've used for a very long time because it's simple and it's effective. I especially like that it's got a bit of a visual aid here to show you exactly what's going on. You got your frequency setting down here on the left, tight toggles between a band pass or a high pass setting. This split mode is something that the JS DSer doesn't really have. When it's set to split, DSer will attenuate only the frequencies that you've set it to attenuate. So in this case, with the high pass filter going on, this purple area here above the frequency that you set will be attenuated. Or in band pass mode, the more specific narrow bandwidth frequency will be affected. But if you change the mode to wideband, then instead of just affecting those areas, it'll act more like a compressor and bring down the level of the entire track when those S's hit. That can be good for some really aggressive sibilance, but I often find it's overkill when you're just trying to DS a track. Your range is kind of like your ratio. It controls how much your track will be brought down once it crosses the threshold. And then right next to here, you've got your threshold. The nice thing about this plugin as well is that you can switch between the plugin being triggered by the audio coming into it or a side chain. For now, we'll just stick with the regular audio. I'm now Joe Superhero. 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 So I like this Renaissance DSer a lot because I find it very quick and easy to dial in. So if you find that JS DSer to be a little complicated, this DSer might be the answer for you. And you can usually find it for sale on Wave's website at about $29 US. But if you go to buy this plugin from Wave's website and it's not on sale for $29, just wait a little while because it will inevitably go on sale again. The last thing I'm gonna show you when it comes to DSing is a third way that you can do it not involving a DSing plugin that gives you considerably more control over the individual S sound than a DSer would, but takes a heck of a lot more time. When I'm doing a mix, the first thing that I generally do is spend some time to go through the vocal track and manually automate everything. Now I do that so that when I throw a compressor on there later, the compressor doesn't have to work extra hard to even things out. 
it just gets to add a little bit of extra squish to the vocals. But anyways, if you're like me and you do manual automation for your vocal tracks, while you're in there doing the automation, you can track down the S sounds and just volume automate them away. So we'll zoom right into our vocal track here. You can kind of see where these waveforms get very dense. That's your S sounds. So the quickest and easiest way to drag those down with some automation is to capture them in a time selection by clicking and dragging on the background of your TCP. Select your track and press the hotkey V to pull up the volume envelope. Then you can make four quick points on the outsides of your time selection by holding down Control and Shift while you click on the green line, and you can bring that down. Do the same with your other S sound over here. And then you can bring those up and down as much as you see fit. I'm not your superhero. That's of course a little bit too much. I'm not your superhero. I'm not your superhero. Yes, I am that bad. There you go, some manual DSing. That gives you a whole lot of control over your S sounds. It takes forever, but if you're already doing some manual volume automation to your vocals, you can work that right into your workflow. Do be careful to not overdo it on the DSing. It's very easy to make your singer sound like they have a lisp by taking out all of the S sounds. When it comes to DSing, a little bit goes a long way. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. It really helps support the channel and it helps me to make more great content for you guys. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, there's a link down in the description that you can follow to buy me a coffee. Thanks again for tuning in guys, we'll catch you next time.